Hello, everyone. Well, that is a very interesting talk to follow because I'm going to talk about the best practices, but uh, about the databases which we work in. And these are the databases which were born and designed well before Kubernetes and Cloud Native was a thing. So that's kind of how to f run fucked up database on Kubernetes, right? So that is what talk is about. But uh, before we get to that, let me uh, maybe frame where uh, I am coming from in this uh, uh, ecosystem. Now, I've been in the open source database space for uh, a long time, and what we see a lot uh, right now, what there is a lot of push of their uh, running databases in the cloud as uh, proprietary offerings by cloud vendors. You know, you can think about MongoDB Atlas, Amazon Aurora, and so on and so forth, right? Which uh, I think is on one side fantastic usability, which developers love. On the other hand, it comes at a great cost, both literal, like money, as well as uh, uh, loss of convenience, right? And uh, whatever, maybe selling your soul to the devil kind of thing. Uh, and I think uh, in this regard, they're using cloud native thing, uh, you know, whatever you would call it, cloud native databases or Kubernetes native databases, doesn't really matter for me, but if you are going to really look at, uh, uh, really focus on treating cloud as uh, a commodity and really see how you can get more value from open source solutions, that can be uh, more wonderful. Now, you probably uh, saw that already because we're all here members of Data on Kubernetes community, but I also wanted to refer a couple of servers from Data on Kubernetes, right? Uh, one thing is what there are, a lot of folks are actually running data intensive workloads on Kubernetes, right? And this is uh, uh, wonderful. Because if you compare that to a few years ago, right, there was a lot of talk, well, Kubernetes is only for stateless application, you know, nothing stateful, especially not the databases, can be run on that. And uh, guess what? The databases is actually the most common workloads which are uh, uh, run on, uh, well, uh, Kubernetes, right, from uh, data intensive applications. And uh, the other data point is where uh, Kubernetes operators, where we can see uh, what a very large number of folks are using or planning to use Kubernetes uh, operators here. And I think that uh, goes very well in line with the previous talk when they're saying, hey, if you are going Kubernetes way, well, use their uh, API and Kubernetes primitives to their full extent. Now, why do we find the operators wonderful in uh, Kubernetes space is really what they allow uh, that uh, automation, both day one automation and day two automation, right? When the Kubernetes came out uh, in the early days, I remember a lot of folks implemented that very simple hem charts to provision the database of your choice in Kubernetes. Oh, that's wonderful, that works, but you know what? It does not really uh, go the distance because when you uh, because databases, unlike uh, your apps, right? You can typically just pre-provision them from the ground up, right? Because they have to persist the data and all the changes to those data, right? And that means uh, they typically have a quite a long uh, uh, life cycle, right? And a lot of uh, challenges really happen in that day two automation. You know, managing backups, upgrade, dealing with failures, and so on and so forth. The last thing I wanted to mention about the general thing about uh, Kubernetes, or in my arguments when I do uh, to people to say, hey, running the databases on Kubernetes is okay, you will be fine, is what actually a lot of folks are uh, doing those, right? Obviously, data stacks folks just, you know, spoke about their solution, but there are a lot of folks running Kubernetes uh, powered databases and service solutions uh, at, uh, right, uh, right now. Okay, with that, let me move some of the particular 
best, uh, uh, best practices. The number one, as I mentioned, is hey, use uh, uh, operators. For many open source databases, you'll find a lot of ways to deploy the databases, right? Some uh, will be, you know, Helm charts, some will be more kind of full blown uh, operators. You know, look at the operators uh, first. The second one is also making sure you're thinking about hiveability, right? Folks who are running databases for a long time sometimes say, well, you know what, I have this wonderful server which was up for five years, never went down, it has that very robust RAID and so on and so forth. Well, no, you do not rely on single node in Kubernetes and you want hiveability and also which is um, automated. Next one, if you are using those kind of legacy databases, well, typically you don't have a choice of an object store, but at least you want to use persistent volumes, right? Because otherwise you may end up in uh, uh, losing uh, all your data, right? And I think that is one of those, uh, I would say, uh, mistakes, right, and why many developers who tried running databases on Kubernetes may still have a PTSD, because they deploy a database on Kubernetes, didn't use persistent volume, something happened, and their data disappeared in the void, right? Which just doesn't happen if you're physical service, right? Because, well, at least it's somewhere on the hard ways I can touch and maybe, you know, recover data from in some way. Next one is you want to keep a data per pod small, right? If you have your, you know, monolith database, 50 terabytes in size, well, you know, maybe it is not the time yet to take that uh, in the Kubernetes, right? Many of uh, uh, databases, they implement some sort of sharding so they can have a, a data per pod is controllable, right? Whatever that is, uh, Cassandra or, or MongoDB. The next one is maybe kind of conflicting with the previous one, but you want to use also appropriate node sizes and in general hardware uh, configuration, right? I have seen the Kubernetes clusters uh, deployed with relatively small VM of physical node size. We just do not uh, fit the uh, database parameters yet. Yes, maybe you do not want to have that 50 terabyte node, but you well may need to have a pods which have, you know, 16 gigs of RAM, right, or more to uh, deal with your uh, database, and that requires your nodes are scaled uh, appropriately. Next one is you want to configure re uh, resource uh, requests and limits. That is also a surprise for many people moving to Kubernetes because if you are running VMs, in many cases, your kind of resource allocation is sort of semi-fixed, right? I configured four CPU cores and that is what I get in a uh, normal case, right? If you are having a database deployed in Kubernetes with pod uh, having no configuration, it may use uh, you know, all the CPU resource available, but then if there are some other tenants it may be kind of squeezed to, uh, to basically nothing, which, especially in production, use cases can be very unfortunate. Also, you may need to make sure you are setting anti-affinity rules properly. Right, well, many operators will actually do that uh, uh, for you on its own, but you know what, if you happen to have a free node clusters where all of them are running the same physical node, well, that is not a good idea, right? You're not getting your uh, high ability. The next one is about the database on itself, right? Well, where a magical Kubernetes is, by default, it's not going to tune your uh, database. So configuration, indexes, queries, all of those need to be taken care of for mm, their uh, optimal uh, performance. And here, let me have a, a shameless plug from Percona. We have a tool. It's kind of based on the Grafana and, and uh, Kubernetes called uh, Percona Monitoring Management. 100% open source, right, which allows you to optimize that uh, queries nightly. Mm. 
Next one is understand how to scale your database of choice. Some of the databases are wonderful in terms of you can scale them out, right, by just, you know, having more uh, post deployed. Others uh, don't. You only can uh, scale up, right, and again, up to certain limits. As I mentioned, you probably do not want to run a 50 terabyte database on uh, with a heavy load, right, on Kubernetes for those days. At least you want to make sure to understand that so you're not having surprises. Uh, in this case, hey, you know what, I need to scale 10x because my product manager told me what we're expecting, dramatic growth of the users. Well, guess what? Can't really mm, do it. Next one, maybe more technical, is what you want to control eviction with a port priority. One thing about the, uh, the, the databases, especially with many legacy ones, they do not like to be kicked in the nuts, right? They often have to kind of resynchronize and do some other stuff to uh, rejoin the cluster, right, which may reduce their uh, performance or availability of your uh, cluster may be degraded, right? So you want to make sure that doesn't happen more than that uh, uh, absolutely uh, needs to do. Uh, Security-wise, you want to make sure you are not uh, exposing your database more than you should have. Of course, that is not uh, uh, Kubernetes related, but uh, what we see in Kubernetes as well as in many clouds, some not security conscious developers are looking for an easy button, which is kind of exposed to the world because that means it's very convenient to access that for us from wherever we have. Well, that uh, idea can be dangerous. With that, uh, of course, encrypting data at rest and data at uh, uh, transit is a very good security practice. And especially with a modern, uh, you know, the CPUs, right, uh, libraries, it doesn't really cause very, uh, very large uh, overhead, but ca can be quite helpful. Next one is you want to use Kubernetes secrets to pass the database credentials to your applications, right? Uh, as a uh, uh, previous speaker mentions already, well, default passwords, right, is not a good idea, and, you know, hard coding passwords somewhere in configs is not uh, optimal either. Number 14, don't forget backups. When you have a clustering, redundancy, have ability, whatever that does not eliminate uh, needs from backups. Again, not Kubernetes specific, but uh, is uh, uh, important to highlight, especially what the good operators actually make robust backups uh, uh, quite easy. Right, a lot more convenient to, to contribute than your kind of traditional Linux VM based deployments. And number 15 uh, uh, would be to consider running the databases which are really designed to run in this cloud native space or uh, Kubernetes. Right, there is uh, uh, TidyB, which was mentioned, Vitesse, uh, they do a very good job, Neon doing a very interesting work with Postgres, Yugabyte, and some others. Finally, let me finish with a few things beyond uh, their, uh, the Kubernetes operators. One thing we uh, note is what while a lot of folks who live in brief Kubernetes, they love operators and are able to confuse that uh, uh, technology directly, while there are some other folks saying, well, you know what, we kind of like that Amazon RDS look at fill, you know, click to provision a database, you know, all that Kubernetes YAML kind of or, uh, hard for us, right? And that is, I think, where we uh, uh, can see more of the open source uh, developments for that. You know, remember I started I said in the past, a lot of folks are doing database as a service based on Kubernetes, but typically these are, uh, you know, all that management plane, right, is uh, uh, proprietary. Well, that is one of the things we are building. In PMM, we also are building an uh, interface for uh, provision database as a service using in uh, Kubernetes. It is uh, currently a work in progress, but again, as it goes for open source, we would very much appreciate your uh, feedback and uh, maybe even some of your code. 
Well, with that, uh, that's all I have. Hopefully that was at least a little bit helpful. Very good. Thank you. Let's give him a round of applause. We got time for one quick question. Any questions? Any answers? Any suppositions? Savan, what would you like to ask? The pizza. Oh, okay, yeah, the French pizza. We'll get to that. Yes, Gabriel. Yeah, Peter, I wanted to ask you, what's your... Sorry. No, oh, no, no. oh, okay. Sorry, I was focused on the, on the question. <laughs> so, what's your, what's your take on, on Jeff's uh, opinion about cloud native versus Kubernetes native? Databases. Oh, is it, uh, uh, the, is it the same or different? Well, you know, I think uh, Jeff is a smart dude. If you said uh, those are like uh, in different bullet points, they must be different. <laughs> <laughs> Would Jeff lie to us? Absolutely not. Okay. All right, with that, with that, uh, let's give Peter another round of applause. That was a great talk. So